Nice. And something I've, uh, you know, I had to prepare a marinade yesterday and leave it overnight. And we're also having uh, bourbon peach ice cream. That sounds very good. I know. I yeah. know. I'll, I'll, I'll save you some. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds wonderful. So, Ginger. So we're, you were experimenting yeah. a lot. And every now and again, like last night, I said, are you tired of cooking? She said, yes, I am tired of cooking. I said, let me make tacos. <laughs> so, you know, it's not always, uh, you know, more elegant fare. But, but what's really nice is that we're actually sitting down and eating together. And we're making... Um, making that a much more regular part of our work because i mean of our day because our work a lot of times intervenes and if she's in the middle of either a deadline run or she's just in the groove or if i am in the groove we each know enough about this kind of work that it's like no excuses necessary i totally get it there's a plate in the oven waiting for you so but this this period of time we're just saying, let's sit down and eat together. It's been wonderful. So how does it work? Was she in the cabin up there with you for a time or some of the time or any no, other time? No, we were, I was, I was off in Australia and I was there, I think actually the day I left, which was the 16th of March, uh, was the first time I heard people actually taking it all seriously. I'd been at these festivals in little malarial tents with, three or 4,000 people wow. who would, you know, come up to me afterwards and throw their arm around me and say, let's take a selfie, mate. And then go into a concert hall with four or 500 people. And it was, you know, nobody was taking it seriously. I mean, it hadn't really hit. Um, and so, and then I'm on an airplane, which is like a, you know, a winged Petri dish for 24 hours. And so I got home and it was like, I'm not taking any chances. Plus, uh, Carmen's 89 year old mother lives with us mm. and it was the only responsible thing to do. So no, we did not see one another essentially for six weeks. Yeah. That's, that's amazing though, how you can do that. And you know, you both could do these things, your work, you could do it from home. I mean, a lot of people can't. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're at home a lot sequestered and there have been lots of tales of people being sequestered and it, it wasn't easy for them. No, uh, no. Yeah. I remember, I remember seeing a, a, a poll that, you know, after three or four weeks, uh, a majority of parents said they would consider homeschooling. And I just thought, give it another three or four weeks. <laughs> we'll, t exactly. we'll take another poll and see how they still feel about it. And in fact, there was an there was a, an op-ed in the in the New York Times this morning that said, you know, the 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 nasty truth of of these times, and the law of the pandemic is you can have children or a job, but it's <laughs> damn near impossible to do both. So you know, um, you do your work in in fits and starts. You squeeze it in when you can. I have a friend who's a poet who writes beautiful concise, tight little poems. And I said, gosh, I wish I could write like that. How do you do that? She, she said, I'm a mom. I, I, can, I have like an hour a day I can actually write. This is as much as I can get done. So you, you fill the time with what you have. What a talent. So obviously you miss live performing. That's I do. I do, though, you know, I'm, I'm pushing 68 years old right now. And a lot of my friends and family are saying, so you're old enough to retire. You're collecting your union pension. Um, you're on social security. You got Medicare. What are you going out there for? And I feel the most like I'm doing my job when I'm in a room with a few hundred people. And for that couple hours, maybe we were able to jointly construct some kind of community even if it's for just an hour or two. And I think that was my introduction to music, uh, I mean, to concerts, you know, the, f the first concert I ever went to was Pete Seeger. And mm -hmm. his, his concerts were all about, uh, not only community, but about participation. You became part of a choir when you walked in there. And that sense of we're creating this thing in concert with one another became 
a touchstone for me that um, I really miss right now, and I'm trying to learn this new technology that's wrapped around this new art form of doing these online live streaming concerts that somehow knits together, you know, eight, twelve hundred people who are stopping in from all over the world. Yeah, and it's a form that I don't think is going to go away. Uh, but live performance will never go away for me. Um, I think I think things are going to be really different for a couple of years. Um, just the I was talking to Eddie Owen out at the uh, you know his great venue out there, the Red Clay Music Foundry, and it holds nearly three hundred people. And he said, according to the guidelines, I can put maybe sixty or seventy people in oh. here. And it makes, you know, it, it puts the infrastructure of our entertainment industry completely, uh, you know, on edge. Um, so I'm starting to do a lot more concerts where it's sponsored by, say, the Red Clay Music Foundry, and they sell tickets. And yeah. they get a cut, I get a cut, my agent gets a cut, because this, this ecosystem in which the entertainment world lives requires that we have presenters and that we have agents and those two forces haven't been making any money on these live reforms i mean what you know what most live performances is busking essentially yeah that's really what it is just electronically it's electronic busking and yeah. um but it's what we got you know we're it's 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 the new abnormal and uh, we're all trying to learn new things and be creative. I mean, with, with this album, for instance, I realized the reason that it's an online only, you know, download only is because I didn't have the money to manufacture a CD. And CDs really sell at gigs. Um, right. But also, I did it this way because I had no money to do it another way. And then I thought, well, okay, let's look at through the other end of the telescope. I don't have any money to buy your album, John. So I thought, okay, well, let's just make this a pay what you can. And I was relying on the kind of innate generosity that I've seen during this time. And lots of people who didn't, you know, if you don't have a job, you don't have an income, for heaven's sakes, you still need the music here, it's yours, it's free, that's fine. Because I have the faith that there's people on the other end of that economic spectrum that are gonna say, okay, here's a hundred bucks for yeah. this thing. And that kind of stuff has happened. It's been, it's been, um, I, I don't even want to say astonishing. I think it's been affirming. Good, good. You have that fan base. You've developed such a fan base over so many years now. I think they, they feel dedicated to that. I think that's beautiful. You could do this on, it's folkmusic.com. Mm -hmm. Go right to it. It says cabin fever. You just click on that and you can uh, download and pay what you can. And yeah, yeah, and if if you don't have money, um, or you don't feel like it's worth anything, uh, <laughs> you know, there's no questions asked. It's 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 a complete act of faith on both sides. You don't know what you're getting. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to pay, and you just sort of have to say, okay, I'm doing okay. I didn't, you know, I'm working from home. I didn't lose my job. Yeah, I got a I got a little spare change. <laughs> And it's really, really nice. Good, good work. Um, I guess we could just close this out here. Just uh, if you want to play a little uh, bit of uh, the opening track, Frontline. Sure. Let me get my fingers on here. I'm on a 12-hour shift, seven-day streak Haven't had my children in over two weeks I can tell you more, but I'm too tired to speak This is, this is life on the front line Not enough gloves, not enough masks Not enough hands and too many tasks Everyone asks, this is life on the front line. On the front line, there's no place to go, facing the foe where it's found. On the front line, there's no time. 
Thank you very much it's again on music.com you could order the new album called cabin fever available from your computer that's awesome thank you very much oh you're welcome thank you great to talk to you again <laughs>